Hey everybody, we're back. Brand new Cabral concept. Today is our Friday review where we're going to be going over the spring community detox. Why you'll want to make sure that you're completing your own functional medicine detox this spring. We're going to be going over a product review. Today I'm sharing with you the final results from the highest potency polyphenic olive oil literally that I found in the world. The search is over. I'm going to share that with you here today. I don't know if it's going to be the right fit for you, but I'm going to share the product name and maybe you want to check it out yourself. We're going over a book that really redefines how to exercise and train your body in terms of an intensity level. When to go hard, when to recover, what it looks like on a daily basis. It was a good read. I'd like to be able to share that with you. And then two breakthroughs in clinical science. The first one is in conventional medicine and a cancer-based therapy that, again, I like to give credit where credit's due. They are dramatically extending lifespan by over 70% versus the placebo uh, for those that have been dealing with a certain type of cancer. I'll share that. And then a big breakthrough in natural-based health, and that is with red light therapy and its effect on improving everyday blood sugar levels. So stay tuned for that. Let's dive right into today's show. If you're not already aware, next Monday starts our global community detox. And we're not talking about a couple hundred people participating. We're talking about tens of thousands of people from around the world participating in our community detox. It's something that we do each and every quarter. It is the cornerstone of overall getting into healthier levels of daily intermittent fasting, improving your meal timing, improving your glucose, improving your hormones, improving healthy levels of inflammation, brain clarity, and so much more. And it fits into whatever program you're doing right now. And it's not going to dramatically change your life, right? Meaning like it will in terms of health, but you're not your everyday schedule. It doesn't cost more than your everyday schedule. So there's no reason not to do it. There is literally only benefit, only upside, and that is guaranteed. So you can check that out at stephencabral.com slash detox. Hope you join us in the month of April for your spring functional medicine detox. All right, so let's go over the podcast recap for the week. Monday, I explained and literally broke down, this is so important, does visualization alone work in the law of attraction? And I think that you'll find that it's an interesting answer because in one way it does in one way, it needs something else. So definitely check out that show if you're someone that believes in setting goals, visualizing, but also trying to work the process so it's essentially guaranteed every time. I share that. All these podcasts, of course, are at stephencabral.com slash podcasts. All right, Tuesday's show is the best diet to restore your energy and mitochondria. Make sure you tune into that. The last couple of weeks have been on mitochondria, one show a week. It's so important for health, and it's so important for lifespan as well. All right, Wednesday show is the nine reasons to never vape. So vaping dangers explained. Extremely important that we check that out, especially for our youth and many other people switching to vaping or starting vaping because they believe there's no dangers to it and that it's somehow better than smoking cigarettes. All right. And then yesterday's show was how to get rid of smelly feet. I did the show on purpose after a really intense episode the day before. I said, let's do something fun, but also helpful for all those people out there who's their sneakers smell, their socks smell, their feet smell. All right, here are the reasons why. Here's what you can do. Take action, get rid of those smelly feet. All right, let's uh, get right into now our product review of the week. I've been excited about sharing this with you. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know about this. You don't know about it in depth, but you know about it because I talk about this on my Instagram stories because every single day I use olive oil, typically twice a day, lunch and dinner. So olive oil is something that my family has used since I remember, right? Since I was little. My grandmother used to cook Sunday dinners every single Sunday. And my great great aunt, uh, she used to be there as well. So my great great aunt uh, was born in Italy, came over. She was only a couple years older than my grandmother, but her family had kids for like 20 years. And so uh, she was only a couple of years older, uh, but she was the, you know, she was my grandmother's aunt and my mother's great aunt, making her my great great aunt, but only a couple of years older than my grandmother. And so um, they used to cook nice Italian meals. And of course, there was olive oil. And so I've always enjoyed olive oil, always used it. When I started getting into my early 20s, I learned about the health benefits of olive oil, started to use that in college, uh, basically on all of my late night meals as I was trying to put on 
weight and muscle and all that. And so I would have my tuna out of the can, my, you know, my, my minute rice and my olive oil. That's what I did. Very inexpensive meal, probably cost me $2 for all of that. Uh, not necessarily the healthiest thing to do, but uh, I was you know, 19, 20 years old, learning the ropes and these are the things that we do. Now, I have this, I have this, uh, I don't want to say that I'm a connoisseur of olive oil, but I'm someone that has very much looked into the benefits of it. I have probably way too many podcasts on the benefits of olive oil, but it is so important. It really is. There is omega nines. I did a podcast, which I would love you to check out. That was episode. Let's see here. The big benefits of omega nines. And that was episode 2952. So check out that show because most people know about omega threes. They know about omega nine, or they know about omega sixes, threes and sixes, but they don't know about nines. Well, what I wanted to share with you here today, I've, I've recommended lots of bottles of olive oil before, many, many bottles. I don't have any relationship to any of these companies. And this right here, I'm holding in my hand, if you're watching this on video, uh, well, you get to see it. If not, I'm going to explain it over audio. So it's by a company called PJ Cabos. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not. It is Greek olive oil. So my favorite types of olive oil are actually Moroccan and Greek, two different types that I like. All of them are family reserves. They're single estates. I'm not going to talk about all the other ones. Well, maybe I'll give a plug to my other favorite, which is Desert Miracle. That's my everyday olive oil, Desert Miracle. This one, why am I talking about then they're all organic, of course. They're all first press, cold press, etc. So PJ Cabos Organic High Phenolic Greek Extra Virgin Olive Oil is called the Phenolic Shot. And on the side, if you're looking at this, it literally shows a tablespoon and it says Phenolic Shot. And here's why. This isn't really an olive oil. This is a nutritional supplement. This is, when you taste this, it's pungent, it's bitter, you can taste all of the polyphenols in there. It's about double that of a regular olive oil. So whenever you have a good olive oil, there's that bite, there's that pepperiness, that bitterness in the back of the throat. That's actually, those are the polyphenols. That's what some people call the plant toxins, which is hilarious. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So the benefits from those, they've been shown to the oleic acid, the omega-9s, the anti-cancer-based effects, the effects on balancing helping with blood sugar, the effects on improving the mitochondria, the effects on brain health, improving cardiovascular disease, and blood pressure and stroke. So just a couple benefits, right? And so... Um, that, again, I'm a, I'm a huge believer in olive oil. It's part of like my family, but it's also a, just a huge health benefit. So this one right here, of course, it meets all of the qualifications when you're looking for olive oil, which is um, one estate, first pressed, cold pressed, dark bottle, organic, um, and that's it. And so the difference with this one, though, is I don't know that it's an everyday olive oil for putting all over your meals because it's so potent. But if you're looking just to do maybe a half a tablespoon or a tablespoon of this mixed with your regular olive oil on a meal, you could certainly do that. And that's how I often do it because it's very strong. It's very potent. And unlike, um, you know, some people... You know, some people think that I only eat foods based on the health of the food. And while I would say that there's some of that, like I include certain foods because they are healthy. There's no doubt about that. But I'm not dislike other people where I want the meal to be tasty, where I want to enjoy it. And so I use other olive oils that I enjoy the taste of to a greater degree. Now, they're still high in polyphenols. They still meet all the qualifications, but they're not to this level. This is literally, they made it because this company makes other olive oil as well. I like their other olive oil, just not is one of my favorite favorites. But this right here, if you're looking for the most potent, the strongest, the best for mitochondria, anti-aging, etc., this is it. And so you might like this as your daily olive oil. Feel free to check it out. I will link it up today at stephencabral.com slash 2975. That is today's episode. StephenCabral.com slash 2975. Check it out. See if it's a good fit for you. And even if it's only a one-time purchase, well, um, like this bottle right here, usually a bottle of olive oil in our family only lasts two weeks, maximum. This bottle has been going on now about six weeks, almost two months, because I just don't use it all the time. I use it a little bit uh, sparingly. Great little shot in addition to my other olive oil and that's how we do it. All right. So let's go over now another link I will put up at episode 2975. And it's a book by Matt Fitzgerald. Matt's run, Matt has written a bunch of books on running, triathlon training, etc. And this one's called 8020 Running. Run stronger, 
and race faster by training slower. But it's not just for people that are looking to compete in a race, triathlon, etc. I have started to ramp up, which most of you know, my exercise-based routine. And I'm doing it by essentially exercising daily. I take one day off per week. I still sauna on that day, so I still do recovery, but I'm not necessarily exercising. And the reason I started to move it to daily exercises one time, and I know that doesn't really make sense on the surface, but I didn't have an hour and a half every day to block out. I just didn't. I do my hour walk in the morning, but that's also work-based. I do calls while I'm on that walk, and that's how I get my first 5,000 steps of the day. So I, I recommend that for everybody. Like if you're listening to a podcast, if you're watching video, like just hop on a treadmill, go outside, walk on a walking pad, whatever you feel is best for you, but get the steps in. But then I want to do my workout. So I was finding, I was not able to do my weight training, my running and my sauna or PMF or red light, like all in one day. It was just, it was just too much. I've got a lot of work, busy practice. I've got my two daughters that take, you know, my wife that take, um, precedence. I've got my, my new, uh, King Charles Cavalier dog, which, uh, he's a puppy still. And he, you know, he takes his work as well. So there just wasn't time in the day to, to do that hour and a half. And some people may have it. And then in the future, 10 years from now, I honestly will. I, I think that I probably will, but for right now, we all do what we can do. And so I said, I can dedicate 45 minutes to an hour maximum a day for exercise, not including the walk in the morning. So what I did is very simple, very straightforward. I do cardio, and then I do, and so basically it's aerobic, anaerobic, uh, and then I just alternate. So we'll call it cardio, weight training, cardio, weight training, cardio. And that's basically it. Cardio, weight training, cardio, weight training, cardio, weight training. Yeah, so it's three of each. That's all that it is. And on my weight training day, one day a week, I'll do some hard interval-based sprints after the workout. And for the cardio days, it will m mainly be running, but one day could be a bike. And that's for 30 to 40 minutes. That's what that run is. And for you, you might start out at 10 to 20 minutes, and then the rest of it is walking, alternating. But why am I explaining all of this to you? Well, on my cardio days, what I realized is that I was going too hard. I really was. And I was burning myself out. I was, I was exhausted. I was inflamed. And I said, what's going on here? Like, I don't understand this. I'm not, I don't think that I'm overdoing it. And so I started doing it by heart rate training only. Something I teach inside of highperformancehealth.org is I needed to stay in zone two or very low zone three. And without doing my heart rate monitor, I was just going by how I felt and like moving my body, I was actually in zone four the whole time. So basically, I'm pushing my body now hard six days a week instead of building up the aerobic fitness that I wanted from the cardio. Because the cardio is so amazing for circulation, for the immune system, building up immune resistance, but only if you're in zone two to the bottom of zone three. After that, you're actually pushing the immune system too hard. You're building up too much what are called interleukin-6. And someone like me, who's very prone to inflammation because of genetics and all that, all that jazz, but again, keep my, I keep my body healthy by understanding how my body works. And uh, now, by using 80-20, I realize that I was going too hard. So what 80-20 is in a nutshell is this. Instead of you reading the book, now you're welcome to read the book, of course. 80% um, of your training should be lower intensity. It should be around zone two. And then 20% of your workouts are hard. They're pushing your body zone four, maybe zone five, like full, full out. So my weight training workouts, my last set of those are intense, no doubt about that, but not the working sets up to that. My interval sprints one day a week are intense, but then I have three just lower intensity cardio days. And when you add up all the minutes and all the volume, you can see that 80% of my training now is lower intensity so that I don't burn my body out. And then what I do, and they re recommend this in the book, is you only increase your training by no more than 10% a week. So what I'm doing now is, let's say I'm going for a 30 minute run. Okay, the next week I won't do more than 33 minutes maximum. The week after that, not really more than 36 and a half minutes. So very slowly, gradually building up your pace and then building in unloading weeks so that it's lower mileage or even a little slower. So 
you can use your Apple Watch or you can use a Garmin watch or you can use a chest strap uh, heart rate monitor, which is even more effective that connects to your watch. And you can do that and you can find your Zone 2. I've got plenty of podcasts on Zone 2 cardio uh, and you can go to stephencabral.com slash podcast. You can find those. But uh, it's very simple, very straightforward as to how to find the different zones of exercise. And if you ever can't find a podcast, ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. We'll find that for you. So just want to give uh, my recommendation for the book 80-20. He, there's a lot of books on 80-20 principles. And uh, this book was very simple, very straightforward to read. So I wanted to share that with you. Okay, happy to do more podcasts on this. If this was an interesting topic, feel free to just leave that in the comments below. We listen to you. Uh, we appreciate all your feedback. And again, this show is built for our community. Let's now get into our two research studies for the week. The first one from conventional medicine. There will always be those people out there that say, you shouldn't be talking about conventional medicine. You shouldn't be giving them credit even when they do something that's you know a breakthrough. And I say, we can't do that because conventional medicine gives no credit to natural health, although there are just as many studies out there. We need to make sure that we're always in the up and up, that we always do the right thing, that we rise above that criticism. And we say, listen, our best interest, my best interest is in people. Not profits, conventional medicine, it's all about profits. With natural health, it should always be people over profits. It's okay to make a profit, nothing wrong with running a business. Always put people first. All right, so that's what we're doing here. Check out this study. Uh, small study, but still, let's bring it out there. It's valid because it, it was done over enough time. The study was on 682 patients, ages 30 years old to 86, in 26 different countries by researchers at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut and it was presented at the American Society of Clinical Oncology. All right, so here's the headline. Mortality risk from lung cancer may be cut in half. The drug ozomeritinib, I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it, but I'll link it up for you today, uh, or Tegriso, is a standard therapy when lung cancer returns after surgery to remove tumors. So basically, someone had lung cancer, and they had it surgically removed, and then they'll typically go on this drug. However, this is a recent finding, taking the drug after surgery without waiting to see if the cancer returns led to a 51% reduced death among patients with small cell lung cancer, the most common form of lung cancer. All patients studied had a mutation of what's called the EGFR gene. So let's see here, uh, about five years later, 88% of patients who took ozomeritinib daily after surgery were still alive, compared to its 78% of patients who took a placebo. The survival benefit was seen regardless of whether patients had prior chemotherapy. The drug is available in the US and elsewhere. Small study. You might say, well, not that major. But if we take it over the placebo, now keep in mind, the placebo is going to help some people anyway. So what I would love to see is I would like to have seen the drug plus the placebo plus nothing. That's what I would like to have seen in the study. So let's say that, um, well, let, let's not even just come up with scenarios. 10% greater chance than the placebo, which obviously got some um, effects as well anyway, because we, we know that about the placebo effect. So out of the 682 people... Uh, we would say, well, 70% of that, let's just do quick math, 490, let's round up to 500. So because of the drug, 50 more people who wouldn't have been alive are now alive five years later. So you might say, well, it's not a huge number out of the 500 who would have already gotten the benefit from the placebo. Well, 50 more got benefit. And here's the thing, those 50 people in their family are probably pretty happy. Right? So although I don't go to conventional medicine as my go-to, we have to keep in mind that most people in the world still today are not going to participate in all of the natural health-based modalities that you and I probably would go to first. So to have something like this, at least at their disposal, if we truly care and want to help people, it at least might be something worth looking into. All right. Want to keep it at that? Might be for you, might not be for you. I get it either way. Appreciate you. Let's move on to the next one, which is more up my alley. This is this is unbelievable. I'm dedicating a whole show to it next Thursday. So stay tuned for next Thursday's show. We're just going to give you the brief on it right now because this is, I mean, remarkable. I think it's I think it's incredible. And it just came out. This came out four weeks ago. 
That's when this study was done or it was released. What's today? Today is March 29th. This came out February 20th. Yeah, so we're talking about really recent. Where was it done out of? Let's find here, City University in London. And researchers found that 670 nanometers of red light stimulated energy production within the mitochondria, the tiny powerhouses within the cells, leading to increased consumption of glucose. In particular, it led to a 27.7 reduction in blood glucose levels following glucose intake. It reduced maximum glucose spiking by 7.5%. This is this is unbelievably clinically significant. Like there's some clinical significance like oh this person got 2% better results, 3% better results. Okay, clinically significant, but not enough to like say oh okay, we're going to invest in red light, we're going to do this. No, 2 to 3%, I don't think so. But think about this. Let's say that a person's average blood sugar spiked to 150 after a meal, right? 150 Okay, so let's look at that. 27% less. Now I did really hard math for myself, but it's about 40 points. I mean, that's insane because every 15 points would be 10%. So 20% would be 30 points. 30% would be 45 points. So it's somewhere right around 40. So this person, after it's only 15 minutes of red light. So 15 minutes of red light can reduce blood glucose spike. And it's actually, let me go back. Let me give you the the honest science here. So typically, let's say the person's blood glucose started at 80 and it went to 150. Okay, so it was an increase then typically of, what is that, 70 from 80 to 150? Yes, so 70. So 30% of that is 21 points. All right, so about 20 points less, which by the way is still insane. So if you typically go to 150, now you're going to 130. It's a dramatic difference. Or if you typically go to 120, now you're at 100. Or, or again, it's all percentages. But this is remarkable. Like this is this is absolutely clinically significant because it's literally done with just red light. So strong red light therapy improves blood glucose. This has dramatic impact for people potentially. Again, I can't give medical advice, medical treatment plans with diabetes, specifically type 2 diabetes, but also could be used for type 1. Just have to regulate this, obviously, with insulin. But also those people that are pre-diabetic or looking to stay within a healthy blood sugar zone. So someone might do red light now 15 minutes before dinner each night, 15 minutes before lunch, 15 minutes before their breakfast. And I also think that just being out in the sunlight in the morning would get some of that red light based effect and help with blood sugar as well. So done before a meal, dramatic impact. I'm actually gonna break down the whole study and what I'll do is I'll take the time to give you all the different percentages and how it can help you and then also talk about what glucose spiking actually means. So glucose spike, the difference between the the delta from where you are to where you typically spike to. So all of that and much more. If you wanna go through the study ahead of time though, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2975. That is it for today's show. I appreciate you tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow answering our community's questions. Take care, buddy. I'll talk with you then. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.